friends so after the emission modeling now uh, we would like to know about dispersion models because when emission modeling has been done and we know how much emissions are coming out of transportation sector or transport related activities then what is the fate of those emissions where do they go so we need to know about dispersion models because ultimately emissions are converted into some concentrations emissions are basically mass of the uh, pollutants which is being emitted by tailpipe emissions or resuspension of dust or other sources related to vehicular movement and transportation infrastructure but what happens when it comes to the atmosphere it gets transported uh, you know in the atmosphere because of wind direction wind movement and then it gets diluted because of you know uh, like uh, diffusion and dispersion phenomena so that's why we want to know what happens uh, through dispersion models how do we estimate concentrations at a particular point because of certain emissions so that we can get to know what is the exposure assessment and whether the concentrations uh, are being exceeded uh, uh, the prescribed guideline concentrations or not because of certain activity because uh, these dispersion models help us to calculate those concentrations of air pollutants in the atmosphere at uh, you know whatever point you want to know x y z you can decide and this is the beauty of uh, modeling because in monitoring okay you can go and monitor certain uh, pollutants but uh, every nook and corner you cannot monitor because it requires lot of resources manpower etc so the modeling is the tool which helps us to get pollutant concentrations at whatever point we want to know so in today's lecture we will discuss first of all what is atmospheric dispersion and its modeling and the types of models which are used and we will focus more on uh, like uh, you know vehicular uh, emissions related uh, modeling efforts for dispersion because there are several models like uh, point source model area source model or line source model so our emphasis will be more on uh, line source model kind of things so that uh, our uh, you know focus is more on emissions from uh, road uh, transportation sector and then what happens when it uh, disperses in the air then the source types like uh, uh, point source as i said or uh, area source but again our focus will be on line source like road transportation vehicle is moving so it's a kind of line source then uh, the dispersion uh, you know procedures of the modeling uh, efforts how do we go for modeling of these uh, line source or any other uh, source of the emissions then dispersion models of various kinds like box models or gaussian models or uh, lagrangian or uh, eulerian models uh, or different techniques like computational fluid dynamics cfd models those kind of model techniques we will uh, you know understand very basics of that so that you know the differences between different kind of modeling approaches and what kind of model is more useful or uh, more applicable in case of transportation sector so after attending this lecture you will be able to uh, you know know the differences between available models and their strengths limitations and how do they work when we want to calculate concentrations out of these emissions and then we will conclude this lecture so emissions and dispersion and concentration is uh, you know this pictorial representation can easily uh, describe like emissions can be from uh, various activities like uh, industries or uh, transportation or human activities then it disperses and like particulate matter it con uh, contributes into uh, like uh, uh, some kind of uh, even uh, these uh, cloud formation or uh, those kind of things which may be because of particulate matters nucleation and the, those processes may be but gaseous dispersion may also be there and which is not visible but it is there means some concentration will increase because of uh, dispersion and then it can get deposited through wet deposition with the precipitation or uh, uh, you know this uh, raining or dry deposition can also happen so it can come to the ground or surfaces of buildings or trees and all those when you see the dust particles etc that is basically the phenomena of deposition so something goes into the atmosphere then by gravity it settles down so the particulate pollutants 
uh, you know quickly settle down, but uh, gaseous pollutants can travel even in small particles can travel uh, you know several kilometers from the source in downwind direction basically. So, the what is the atmospheric dispersion if you want to understand. So, this is kind you know different kind of sources may be there including aircraft or you know this movement of vehicles here also like street canyon uh, emissions may be there then within the buildings okay, household energy related emission sources may be there, ships may be there, even natural emission sources can be there like volcanoes okay, or forest fires or those you know from trees also like uh, from trees also like VOCs volatile organic compounds can get emitted from agricultural practices we get different kind of emissions. So, there are so many sources including industrial sectors or transportation power plants. So, all those emissions come to the atmosphere and it has its own impacts because of dispersion then their concentration increases in the atmosphere and uh, whosoever receptor is there or uh, like human beings or animals or uh, buildings or uh, uh, you know trees etcetera or vegetation whatever get exposed then there will be some chemical reactions and that can have its implications or negative impacts because our health can be damaged like respiratory related problems or buildings soiling uh, happens it uh, it discolors the buildings or uh, it if ozone is there then it can cracks the tires it can harms uh, you know the yield of the crops so every kind of uh, impact is there uh, so for estimating those impacts we should know the concentration and that is why the dispersion models are important in that case. Okay. Then the example of plumes because emissions can be in the form of plumes continuous plume or puffs also like when somebody smokes you know those puffs comes out of those, uh, uh, those emission sources. So, puffs may be there or plumes may be there like this is the plume you can see and this disperses like a cone. Okay, so, uh, we assume that this is kind of Gaussian dispersion model uh, normal distribution you can say that concentration high at the center level then concentration decreases when we go uh, beyond uh, the center line left or right or above or below that center line the dispersion will happen and dilution will also occur. Similarly, uh, you know this tail pipe emission can be there it also disperses. So, with the wind with the turbulence of the wind with the movement of the wind. So, mechanical turbulence can be there, thermal turbulence can be there, all these participate, okay. diffusion can also occur, then some atmospheric uh, reactions can occur, all those uh, you know uh, physical chemical reactions they help in uh, dilution also of the pollutants. So, these plumes can be in the form of conical shape and they can travel uh, distances depending upon what is the uh, wind velocity and uh, turbulence is there. Okay, then uh, if we talk about uh, you know like correlation between spatial or temporal scale of modeling because within the space from the source if you go away from the source uh, you know from the center line then uh, this dispersion occurs and concentration decreases. Similarly, time also means uh, at a particular time if uh, something is emitted. So, after certain time it will be diluted because of those physico chemical reactions you can say. So, different kind of pollutants have their life span okay. those pollutants which have higher life span they will uh, remain in the in the atmosphere for decades or even centuries like CFCs etcetera and to they can uh, remain in the atmosphere uh, for centuries. CO2 is also like for several decades it can be in the atmosphere, but other pollutants like particulate pollutants they settle down or they get reaction. So, they are removed from the atmosphere or CO like CO get uh, you know converted into CO2 or methane also. So, all pollutants have different life span. So, accordingly spatial and temporal distribution can be seen. When we talk about uh, dispersion model, so uh, you know like emission modeling we have already uh, seen. So, those emission models output is basically the emission rate okay, how much quantity of some pollutant is coming out of a source per unit of time right. So, that is the input parameter in dispersion models and beyond that or in addition to the emission rates the meteorological data like temperature gradient and then the wind velocity. Okay, or other physical parameters like if we are trying to uh, simulate uh, point source model then height of the stack right. 
similarly like uh, line source model then it can be emission rate as, as well as uh, you know distance traveled uh, per unit of time those kind of thing and then stability criteria all those things are input parameters for uh, these dispersion models then we calculate the concentration ok. So, the usage of the atmospheric dispersion model is uh, varied kind of uh, uh, you know usage you can apply in several uh, situations forecasting for example, if you want to predict or forecast or estimate air pollution distribution uh, you know in a domain uh, like temporal or spatial. So, you can uh, know how much concentrations may be there after certain time or after certain distance and air quality standards comparison like uh, some source you are adding because of some industry or some highway and you want to see that what will be its impact. So, background concentration if you know then if you run the model and you calculate certain uh, you know quantity. So, that adds into the background concentration then you can know whether the sum of the total like the estimated concentration plus the background concentration if it is exceeding the prescribed guideline concentration then we have to do something to uh, you know reduce the concentration otherwise it will be unacceptable ok. So, that, that way also it is helpful then we also assess like environmental impacts whether in uh, you know like some eco uh, sensitive areas or something like that then if you want to select some particular location for new investment. So, again as I said you have to compare with the guideline concentration or standards national ambient air quality standards. So, these models help to estimate the quantities and then compare with the those data and then you can know whether it is ok or it is not ok. If it is not ok then you have to provide certain solution for example, like technological interventions Maybe you say that uh, in this stretch uh, you cannot allow uh, less than uh, you know Bharat stage 6 or Euro 6 those kind of vehicles will not be allowed or heavy vehicles will not be allowed. So, many things may come out of those studies ok when how does it work basically when we talk about these input parameters. So, within the dispersion model input parameters will come what kind of topography is there because if it is a smooth terrain or rough terrain. So, certain factors vary according to the topography. Similarly, emission sources information that is uh, what kind of pollutants are there what is the emission rate ok. Then meteorological parameters wind velocity, temperature, humidity all those kind of things may be there and then we get this atmospheric concentration as we have discussed. Types of models may be of varied nature depending upon their uh, like uh, principal mechanism like emission models we which we already uh, studied meteorological models which gives us uh, you know those meteorological parameters which can be input parameter for certain models. Similarly, chemical models which help us to know what will happen when some gaseous components react with the atmospheric constituents or they react with each other then what will like ozone production ok. Ozone is not a primary pollutant which is emitted by uh, some source it is produced in the atmosphere. So, the chemical models help us to know how much ozone will be produced if precursors are being emitted like NOx or CO or hydrocarbons those kind of things right. So, chemical models can be there then if you want to assess the impact health impacts etcetera or impacts on the crops or impacts on the ecosystem then we uh, use receptor models right. Similarly, source dispersion models which are uh, very popular which we will discuss uh, different kind of models. So, these kind of uh, models are there. Emission models basically as I said it can estimate uh, temporal and spatial emission uh, rates and meteorological models which I just uh, discussed with you. So, uh, you can go in laser more details are there with that. Input data source types. So, source may be like uh, point source area source ok and uh, line source etcetera or static source and mobile source. So, in case of transportation modeling basically mobile source is used right. Then emission rates of each pollutant you should know because you want to estimate the concentration of each pollutant. So, for each pollutant emission data must be there which will be coming from emission modeling which we have already discussed right. Geographical characteristics as I said because these uh, terrain will impact 
meteorological characteristics okay so source types like point source as i said line source from one point to another how much vehicle movement is there those kind of thing then area source can be there in irregular area where uh, like side lengths may be different kind of volume source can also be there in buildings etc when you are going to know like indoor air pollution okay so in a building how these pollutants are traveling from one corner to another so some cfd related mechanism those kind of things can be there so modeling can be for a small uh, you know uh, location or a small area to big area so uh, in indoor air pollutants you talk about like even uh, diffusion of centimeters or so if uh, it is like uh, cubic meter area of the uh, this uh, rooms etc right but Uh, in uh, these dispersion models which are outside then you talk about kilometers you want to know what will be the concentration at 10 km downwind so you know modeling uh, you know uh, structures change accordingly so different kind of models are used for different kind of physical uh, properties or uh, domains physical domains and uh, their distances right we talk about line source model which is the emphasis of our talk because we are talking about transportation emissions so line source model is the basic thing which we should know so this is the road like you can see so on road some vehicle is moving movement is there so on the vertical of that road length if some wind is moving so uh, in perpendicular of that how much concentration will be there from the road in the Uh, downwind distance okay so like 10 meter 50 meter 500 meter something like that similarly there may be like mechanical turbulence okay thermal turbulence because of temperature difference so vertical turbulence may be there and uh, this can uh, you can have this temperature profile etc wind velocity can also be there so accordingly you can estimate by using those techniques which will which will be discussed uh, soon after these some slides when we talk about like instantaneous release of the puff so we see these dimensions after certain time like it it goes and uh, up to a receptor some person is there so what will be the concentration of that puff because of certain distance it will be diluted but we should know only then we can be able to uh, you know learn how much impact will be there on the health of the persons so those modeling techniques mathematical equations that will give you idea about using all these input parameters and knowing the concentration at certain distances from the source well when we talk about you know dis dispersion modeling procedures so um, you know again we can repeat in detail like background concentration of pollutants we should know only then we would be able after adding the calculated concentration whether it will go beyond exceed the guideline concentration or not if it does not exceed then fine we can say that that this activity is okay from air pollution point of view it is not contributing in a negative way right meteorological conditions must also be known temperature profile wind velocity etc wind rose diagram all those things source data like site interpretation or description whether it is city it is countryside smooth terrain rough terrain all those things because they will influence the calculations because of certain factors like emission rate okay model options whether it is receptor grid type of model dispersion model parameters are needed then local topographical features which we have already discussed so these will be the input parameters for atmospheric dispersion model right then estimation of ground level concentrations by using that uh, calculations because model is nothing but set of equations mathematical equations all these input parameters will be part of those in uh, mathematical equations and output will be there in terms of concentration in particular these models right so assessment of potential environmental health effects will be there later on when we have the concentration then another models are used for health impact assessment and those kind of things otherwise dispersion models basically give you output of the concentration and please learn the difference emission and concentrations are two different things emissions are quantity of pollutants emitted by a source per unit of time and concentration the quantity of pollutant per unit volume of air that is the point here in difference in concentration and emission so you should not get confused that emission is same or uh, you know concentration is same those are two different things that's why two different kind of modeling efforts are needed for emissions we have Uh, other models like mobile ive wapi those kind of models for concentrations we have another set of models uh, for dispersion models which we are discussing today 
like uh, types of models, so box models, okay. example is like uh, this Aurora, we will see what is the concept of this particular model. Then Gaussian models, this is very popular technology, technique rather that uh, we assume that the model this uh, dispersion occurs in a kind of uh, you know this kind of thing. So, at center uh, line it is highest concentration, it, if you go left or right to the center line then concentration is less and after some time it is very less. Okay? So, those techniques are there. So, most of the models are basically Gaussian models and like K line 4, highway 2, car FMI, OSPM. Kelp of air mode, ADMS, all these models we will discuss. Another technique is Lagrangian and uh, Eulerian models. So, they their uh, you know this uh, kind of uh, uh, scale is different. Okay? So, different models have different scales. Computational fluid dynamics model, CFD model. So, this is another technique which gives the every model has its own strength and weaknesses. Some models require lot of resources, lot of input data. Okay? and uh, some models are very simplistic in nature, but their output will be uh, rough, it will not be very precise. But for policy making for uh, to begin with uh, you know having some impression what will happen after certain activity. So, accordingly some models are chosen and what resources are available with us. If we want to you know go for detailed study, if we do not have much uh, money or resources then we have to use simplistic modeling uh, approach. Okay? Uh, this Gaussian model dispersion as I said like point source okay, some height is there of the this uh, stack. So, emission is coming out and it is dispersion occurring like a conical shape. So, this is as I said at the center line concentration is highest and if you go left uh, right or left then concentration decreases. Similarly, on vertical uh, direction also when you go up or down the concentration decreases. But with the help of these models, you can get concentration values for x, y, z. Okay, ground level concentrations, z is zero. Okay, this z is zero at the ground level concentration. At the center line, y is also zero because y is distance left or right from the center line. So, if you want to calculate concentration at the center line at the ground level, then only x value will be used. That is the distance from the source in the downwind direction. Y will be 0, Z will be 0. Okay? If you want to calculate concentrations uh, from center line right or left, then there will be some value of the Y, but Z will be 0 because ground level concentration you are trying to calculate. If you want to calculate concentration at certain point in the air, okay, hanging so it has all dimensions X, Y and Z. So, those values will be put and calculations will be made. You can see like near the source the concentration is very high, okay, then it decreases, it decreases and later on it becomes very diluted. So, no effect is there that is why if you are you know bringing some uh, like industry or highway then you have to see its impact on some population which is residing there. So, maybe uh, 2 kilometer there, 3 kilometer there if there is a village. So, the concentration from this source whether it is line source or the point source should not exceed in that village uh, more than the prescribed guidelines of the uh, ambient air concentrations from uh, CPCB and other agencies. When we you know talk about comparative evaluation of dispersion models, then you can see their you know types, which kind of meteorological parameters they need and then what kind of input data they need, what is the application area. Okay? and then accuracy whether it is very precise or very coarse those kind of things. Those remarks these are the metrics or it is given you can go through this. So, every model has its own particular characteristic. Now, we talk about different models. So, this Aurora model which was developed uh, in Belgium and it is known uh, like the full name is air quality modeling in urban regions using an optimal resolution approach that is Aurora. Okay? And this is a three dimensional uh, Eulerian chemistry transport model. So, very sophisticated in that sense and it is designed to simulate urban to regional scale atmosphere pollutant concentration and exposure fields. So, it is a means quite detailed model you can say and it is used for concentration of inert and reactive gases both. Otherwise, more simplistic models are normally for inert uh, pollutants and their simplistic assumptions 
uh, are there that no reaction is occurring like even SO2 concentration you are estimating you assume that SO2 is not reacting whereas in reality it reacts with the moisture it reacts with many things ok. But uh, simplistic models those Gaussian models and they assume that uh, these are inert. But this particular model is basically uh, you know can use inert and reactive gases. So, those kind of mechanism is there some modules are there when you want to use the reactive uh, those uh, reactions or reactive gases then certain modules will be used otherwise you can use in inert fashion also particles related in urban environment ok. And it can calculate you know impact of the changes of land use because land use change may be occurring due to like industrialization or some facilities are coming some township or some roads or highways are being. So, uh, like planting of trees are there whatever change is there this will be incorporated in this model. So, that way it is a nice model, and, but there are again some assumptions are there because this is the box model. So, it assumes steady state condition that within the complete box uniform concentration is there, whereas in reality it may be more nearer to the sources, ok. But it assumes that homogeneous concentration is there, it is well mixed. So, this is simplistic assumption for this box model, but it is there its part, ok. Then uh, uniform concentration as I said in the street also. So, whether this box like a city you have converted it into box length, width and boundary layer height. So, that is kind of box. So, that box modeling uh, can be there and in that you assume that concentration is equal at every point. This is the flow chart for this particular Aurora model. You can see these uh, meteorological modules, different modules are there as I said, terrain module, background concentration module, then traffic module. So, you can uh, use whatever model uh, you want to uh, emphasize. If traffic related uh, phenomena you want to study, then use this one, other modules you can switch off. If there is no much uh, uh, you know uh, application or uh, activities uh, of that kind of nature. Then this advection diffusion or uh, means uh, horizontal movement and then uh, convection movement may be vertical those kind of and chemistry module is also there as I said for reactive gases. Then deposition module can be there, street module can be there. So, it is a uh, kind of a very versatile modeling technique I would say and then concentration is estimated and then you know based on the basis of the concentration whether it is good or bad and you can also convert them into some health risk assessment those kind of things. So, input data, terrain data like uh, you know land use patterns, road networks all those terrain data is the input parameter. So, it is a detailed modeling technique basically. Meteorological inputs, so uh, you know few hundred meters by a separate models those kind of modules are there. Emission input data is uh, of course, every dispersion model will need emission input data. So, these are the uh, you know basic input parameters and then the equation like uh, this uh, emission factor is there and uh, time dependent traffic flow rate. So, total emission can be calculated length of the road also you know. So, you can get this emission ok gram per hour calculated for each pollutant for different pollutant uh, you know values will be different and you can use in the dispersion model. Then uh, another model which, which is very popular for line source modeling is k line 4 model which is developed uh, you know in by California department of transportation. And this is basically for estimating air pollution levels uh, within the uh, you know these 500 meter of the roadways on both sides or particularly the downwind side. And it can estimate concentrations of carbon monoxide or uh, nitrogen dioxide or particulate matters of PM 10, PM 2.5 near the roadways. And as I said it is very popular many people use it for uh, road vehicular emissions basically. And uh, as a, uh, it is extensively used for policy and for uh, like new road is coming then what will be the impact all those kind of things are uh, Kaline 4 can give you the scenario. It requires lesser expertise and comparatively less input data that is why it is very easy to use you know simple uh, 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 even uh, if you run once uh, you can train uh, any researcher or any uh, kind of person who knows basics of the. Uh, this physics and chemistry they can run this model. The input parameters uh, you can see like traffic data of 24 hours and weighted emission factors depending upon what kind of age of the traffic uh, vehicle is there, 
what kind of engine technology is there, then terrain type surface roughness smooth or rough those kind of things. Then road geometry, mixing zone width all those road types okay, that will impact the emissions also. Road alignment okay, it is completely straight or going in different directions, different angles. Then meteorological data which is common in all like speed, wind speed, temperature or the <coughs> wind direction and mixing height and stability classes A, B, C, D those whether it is <coughs> stable or uh, uh, highly unstable those kind of stability classes is to be used because that will influence the uh, dispersion coefficients sigma y, sigma z if you know the basic modeling. Then background CO concentrations and monitored concentrations so that you can uh, sum up them and uh, compare with those uh, guideline concentrations. So, these stability classes A, B, C, D, F, G whatever. So, these are the units of the values which are used in the model. Another model is like highway 2 model which is again uh, which is uh, from US EPA United States Environmental Protection Agency developed this model and the grid size which is used by this model is 10 to 100 meter okay? and even it can go 10 kilometers also. So, good good variation is there for spatial uh, differences. So, scaling factor can be uh, there depending upon the distances and it can uh, be used to estimate concentrations for non-reactive gases. So, inert kind of thing okay? and this both Kline 4 highways they treat uh, traffic as an infinite line source, okay? not the finite. Some models use finite uh, length which we, we will discuss later on. Well, if we talk about differences between Kline 4 and Highway 2 model, then certain differences are there. Like in Kline 4, both thermal turbulence and mechanical turbulence are considered for uh, estimating dispersion or concentrations. Whereas, in this Highway 2, they ignore this thermal turbulence, that means only mechanical turbulence is used in this model. But both models are based on Gaussian dispersion techniques, right. So, like street canyons, buildings, or uh, these are uh, changing surface uh, roughness etcetera, they are uh, as per the simple te techniques of the Gaussian dispersion. Another model uh, like uh, in Finland, they have their uh, own uh, modeling uh, technique or modeling tool which is known as CAR FMI and this is uh, developed by Finnish Meteorological Institute that is why FMI is there. Okay? And this can uh, estimate concentrations of carbon monoxide or nitric oxide or uh, nitrogen dioxide means all oxides of nitrogen NOx emissions basically and then particulate matter fine particles like PM 2.5 okay? and it treats the road as line of finite length. So, the remember K line 4 and other models they treat the road length as infinite, but here this model uses some finite length of the model. So, model techniques accordingly differs from model to model. Well, uh, it needs input parameters as uh, for example, uh, number and locations of the line sources, uh, different uh, roads network may be there. So, if you want to apply in a city, so you should know the complete road network, their length and uh, width etcetera. Hourly traffic volume on those road network okay, that should be known. Then it can uh, be uh, like compounds to be computed which kind of pollutants and the statistical interest, interest uh, we want to know uh, in, in terms of the concentration variations. Hourly time series of the meteorology, so uh, because uh, it calculates uh, like hourly if you want to see the daily then also hourly uh, related values are needed for that background concentration each model needs basically and uh, this is similar to the Gaussian model basically, but it is limited in its use in low wind conditions that is uh, the limitation for this model as uh, Gaussian models have this kind of limitation. Well, the structure if you want to see in a kind of framework or the flow chart then this gives all uh, uh, parameters like these uh, sigma y, sigma z that is the dispersion coefficient, u wind velocity value coordinates, okay, time series as we have seen and then uh, all these values are input parameters then output parameters you will get. Similarly, another model is there operational street pollution OSPM model which is used uh, in Denmark. So, they have developed their own model for this purpose and again uh, this is uh, using Gaussian plume equations which is as I said Gaussian dispersion technique is used uh, popularly by uh, 
these air pollution dispersion models and it can contribute to pollutants from the source or box model to calculate the effect of this turbulence uh, on the concentration. So, that that is their inbuilt uh, parameter for turbulence. It can predict concentrations of uh, these NOx oxides of nitrogen even ozone. So, chemical uh, reaction related chemical model part is there CO and particulate uh, matter and cross wind diffusion within the plume is ignored. So, that is one important aspect of this model some other models they use even cross wind diffusion. So, that is simplicity here and it is uh, these sources are treated as infinite line sources whereas, as you know the earlier model this was car FMI they were using finite length of the roads in uh, this is rather uh, this this one is uh, more akin to uh, Kaline 4 and something like that. Then general conditions for uh, street canyon if uh, street concentrations you want to estimate. So, various parameters are there like roof level wind how much uh, velocity is there then direct plume and then uh, leeward side or windward side uh, concentrations or their uh, physical features then recirculating air background pollution all these uh, you know diffusion and turbulence and uh, dispersion they are uh, mathematically represented by some equations in these models. Okay. And the assumptions and limitations of this OSPM model is basically like the wind uh, direction this is the assumption a street level is assumed to be mirror reflected with the respect of the uh, roof uh, level wind. So, the way this wind is uh, you know moving from this direction to this. So, this is uh, taken in this uh, you know at the ground level also and uh, traffic emissions are assumed to be uniformly distributed across the canyon. So, maybe uh, somewhere it may be more traffic other it is not so uh, it may be thin, but for simplistic uh, assumptions uh, uniform distribution of traffic is there. Limitations are there for example, this model is uh, not fit, fit for uh, like intermittent fluctuations because it has uh, some coarse assumptions of the wind flow. So, it will assume that uh, this wind is flowing at certain speed uh, for a particular time period. So, those kind of limitations are there plus cooling of the exhaust uh, you know plume after emissions is not considered by this model. It is mm, assumed that the same temperature will be there uh, during this dispersion. So, those kind of limitations are there which may give uh, you know those estimated values a little bit uh, uncertainty or uh, uh, may be there means it not it may not be very near to the actual value. Then OSPM model structure can be seen here traffic data it needs meteorological data as other models also need street geometry is important aspect for this because you are applying for street canyons right. Then background concentration is also needed then you can use this model and calculate the concentrations. <coughs> and uh, these are the components basically like building data you should know how much height multi story buildings are there or uh, you know single story buildings are there what is the height ok meteorological parameters these are common like wind velocity, wind direction, temperature all those road database like street width and the street length, vehicle types, vehicle speed, traffic volume all those values, values are needed for this OSPM model. Then we will know the pollutant concentration on defined receptor if you want to know that uh, some uh, you know shopkeepers are there. So, how much concentration will be uh, there they will be exposed to. So, accordingly you can calculate. Then uh, this another technique is there this uh, uh, you know Graz Lagrangian model uh, in Austria it was developed basically. So, uh, this has uh, you know uh, certain uh, uh, strengths like uh, from 10 minute to 1 hour for line and point source in flat and complex terrain. So, it has kind of uh, you know very finer resolution uh, which uh, Lagrangian model uh, can be used for. Assumptions are there like uh, constant plume rise in vicinity of the tunnel portals and temperature differences between ambient air and tunnel flow uh, as a uh, you know function those kind of assumptions are there. Limitations may be like it cannot take into account chemical uh, formation of particles like ammonium nitrate ammonium sulphate etcetera. So, those are the limitations otherwise uh, like uh, under 300 meter uh, it is not recommended uh, for use uh, for validity of turbulent parameter uh, 
well, it does not consider those kind of limitations. Uh, every model has certain limitations as you know. These are the input parameters of the meteorological nature. So, this is same as other models like wind speed, wind direction, temperature etcetera, but uh, like grid size, domain size these should be defined properly. Then there is one CALP of model uh, developed by United States Environmental Protection Agency. So, uh, it has multi layer uh, non steady state puff model okay, dispersion model puff dispersion earlier models were plume dispersion model this is the puff model. So, this is a different kind of model basically it can be used for dispersion of gases and particles and it can you know model uh, different uh, source types like point source line source volume source all those kind as other uh, plume models also uh, are used. Okay. Then uh, this is uh, not recommended means certain limitations are there this is not recommended for use in estimating the impact of NOx and SO2 on secondary particulate matter formation because it does not consider that kind of chemistry in there and uh, b less than 10 kilometer. So, maybe it can be used for other scale, but for that it may not give uh, good uh, results. So, that is the limitation. Also, it does not include modeling of the particle dynamics. So, those are the uh, related issues and it also provides like hourly calculations of gas and particles concentrations for multiple emission sources in terms of particle mass, but does not examine particle number concentration because uh, you know this uh, when we talk about this much milligram per cubic meter. So, that is uh, mass concentration of the particles, but if we talk about number okay, how many thousands or millions numbers are there then different kind of concentration value occurs. So, maybe if uh, fine particles are there their mass concentration very low may be there, but their number may be very large. So, the number also plays uh, role because uh, now new science is coming where the number and the size and shape of the particles also play role in impacting our system. So, but this is uh, the limitation it does not give the number related uh, concentration. Then one more versatile model is air mode model which is developed by US EPA and uh, it can be uh, based on boundary layer turbulence structure and uh, some scaling concepts of different nature. It can predict surface and elevated source concentration like surface ground level concentrations x y z related concentration both for simple and complex terrain. So, that means it is a real versatile uh, model. Then purpose of calculating is one hour average concentration and uh, it can also go for straight line uh, uh, significant changes when stability is there for plume travels from source to receptor. So, these are the assumptions which are part or, or part and parcel of this model. Flow chart if you see same it is like uh, data input geographical meteorological dispersion all those things are there, but only it differs uh, in nature of their scaling. Strengths are there because uh, it also uses Gaussian method uh, dispersion model and uh, uh, limited to treat the flows over the simple terrain. Okay, but this uh, uh, these Gaussian models have uh, you know limited the kind of thing. But this model basically incorporates simple method to approximate flows over the complex terrain. So that kind of strength is there in comparison to Gaussian related models. So a little bit better uh, equations are used in this, but there are certain uh, limitations in this model also because uh, uh, it can be invalid at distances on the order of tens of kilometers downwind. Okay. It changes in the stability wind direction and wind speed. So, only uh, less than 10 kilometer it can give better results. It is not used for receptors beyond 50 kilometers. So, again 10 to 50 may be some uh, calculations may be there it is very good up to 10 kilometer then uh, you know 10 to 50 also some calculations can be there, but beyond uh, 50 kilometers it should not be used. So, maybe uh, for big cities it may be difficult for modeling inappropriate for some near field modeling. So, where wind field is very complex okay, due to terrain or uh, some uh, shoreline something like that. So, uh, it may not be so good in that sense. So, some uh, every model has as I said some limitations. So, these kind of limitations are there for this air mode model. Another model is uh, this area local model uh, France which is developed by 
टेक्निक ऑफ कंप्यूटर कंप्यूटेशनल फ्लू डायनेमिक्स तो दिस इज ए सी एफ डी मॉडल सो दिस हैज इट्स ऑन स्ट्रेंथ बेसिकली विच इट कैन अलाउ लाइक बॉयट एंड डेंस गैसेज डेंस गैसेज लाइक इन भोपाल गैस ट्रेजडी दैट गैस वॉज लाइक डेंसर दैन द एयर सो इट वॉज हगिंग द ग्राउंड वैन इट वॉज डिस्पर्सिंग बट इट हैज दिस मॉडल कैन बी यूज फॉर जनरल बायोन्सी लाइक दोज गैसेज विच आर लाइटर विच गोज अप एंड डिस्पर्सिज and heavier than air gases can also be modeled by this model so this is one very important aspect of this model then certain advantage are also there like it can calculate effects of vehicle induced turbulence okay adjustment to the model parameters can do and then chemical transformations can be modeled using some post processing modules so not only uh, you know inert but uh, for these uh, you know chemistry module is also there part of this model then input parameters it is almost same for others like uh, spatial inputs only scales differ like 100 meter to 5 kilometer apart it can include necessary descriptions okay and uh, 3d mesh it can uh, be taken care of well topography meteorological inputs wind related temperature related emission input which you know flow velocity etc and other optional input depending upon what purpose you are using this model atmospheric dispersion modeling urban this is adms urban adms modeling technique this atmospheric dispersion modeling of uk is of different nature we will see in the table but this urban related uh, this module is versatile so that's why we are discussing it here otherwise uh, there is uh, related to roads also or other sources also but this includes everything like these kind of networking of the roads okay so all these input parameters may be there and it can give grid related all the road network emissions uh, if available then concentration it can give this kind of charts you can have and the dispersion modeling efforts can be there okay applications can be uh, you know it can be used for uh, air quality uh, standard comparison and then developing or testing certain policies what will be the impact which all models are used for source apportionment and source footprint studies so it's a very versatile model you can say and the features of adms model as as i said it is like uh, for screen roads and airport different modules are there but this urban uh, this adms urban has all kind of modules in built in this and that can be used so these are the metrics which give its different parameters and values uh, which are used for uh, calculation purpose so in conclusion we can say that uh, uh, when we talk about emission models the output of the emission models is the input of dispersion models and depending upon the situation uh, depending upon the scale okay whether street canyon or the regional uh, scale kind of modeling effort you want to make so accordingly the technique of the model you need to ch choose and uh, that can be like uh, i have described different kind of models very basic things i have given otherwise every model has lot of things into it so you can go through in detail for learning about those models and uh, these are the dispersion models which are used for uh, uh, concentration calculations based on emission modeling output these are the references for additional information thank you for your kind attention see you again thanks